What the fuck? <laughs> run, 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 run! This game is an absolute masterpiece from Puppet Combo, and is virtually guaranteed to present you their absolute best. The perfect synthesis of low poly graphics technology, intimidating atmosphere, a terrifying antagonist, dynamic and exhilarating gameplay, and a very good game in general. When we realize someone is getting into Puppet Combo games for the first time, we'll immediately recommend the Night Ripper to them, because we know that virtually no horror enthusiast will be disappointed with this game. In terms of the plot, it revolves around a waitress named Rachel who lives in a bad part of New York, but that's all we know because her specific area or borough isn't specified. Her co-worker offers to give her a ride, but she declines, believing she can just walk home. The radio is playing some DJ who thinks what the Night Ripper is doing is actually a good thing, and from what we'll find out later, it shocks us as to how the cops haven't found a single lead yet. Probably an inside job. I mean, it is the NYPD. After getting out of her waitress outfit and picking up a flashlight, she steps out of the diner. We're walking home. Yes, let's exit. Whoa, 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 calm down. Streets! Right off the bat, even though the player knows there's not going to be some sort of danger this early on in the game, they can already tell that if a few of these buildings crumbled, it would look like the Russians went through there at some point. This is a place where a serial killer would thrive, since not only is employment clearly going other places, but impoverished people will seek out taboo, but also old means of making a living when there's few places they can be hired. If our theory is correct, Rachel should be glad she has a job, even though a waitress's wages aren't much. Anyway, it's so clear that some nut could be lurking around the corner willing to pounce, so players are immediately reminded that their guard is going to have it come up some point soon. Proceeding, Rachel discovers something that'll seal her fate. Remember the fact that we're specifically saying, seal her fate. Rachel comes across what's presumably a crime scene loaded up with cop cars blocking her typical path home, so she has to find an alternative way home. Coming across a newspaper clipping, she reads that a serial killer in a black sedan has been stabbing hookers. At this point, the player knows that now, shit gets real. Gone are moments in which they're just taking in the atmosphere and appreciating the game's design, and doing that alone, because now, they know there's something menacing around the corner. Now they know there's actually a chance they can get killed. The player goes through some sort of wood game that shuts and locks behind Rachel, and she has no choice but to continue, and immediately after that, this happens. When you play this game for the first time, this moment is terrifying. There aren't any other cars mysteriously patrolling a derelict part of an economically strata area of New York. A player immediately knows that this is the guy that you should stay light years away from, and they're immediately thrust into driving the edge of a knife, getting away with their life. In addition to this, the Night Ripper also wears a duck mask and makes duck noises for whatever reason. And people say horror games are all similar and monotonous. Well, now they have no right to complain because here's a previously unreleased edition to the Darkwing franchise you've never heard of. After roaming around the area called The Streets, the player will probably come across an abandoned motel, some of the rooms of which are just ripped off. There's nothing of use in this section. Next to a dumpster, the player will find a rope. When the player finds a ledge with a staircase that uses hinges, they can use the rope to raise themselves onto the ledge. This will lead them to the crack den. The crack den is what resembles an apartment complex, but it could just be any sort of 20th century city building, because it's just that generic and the player is supposed to find a key. This place is absolutely labyrinthian because so many parts of the building are repetitive, monotonous, generic, similar, indistinguishable, repetitive, monotonous, generic, similar, indistinguishable, repetitive, monotonous, generic, similar, and indistinguishable, but the player makes progress when they get to the wood wall maze. After sufficient navigating, the player will come across a door which the key opens. Going through the door will take them to the rooftops.
This section is exclusively a parkour section, in which getting through it involves the player having to shimmy across narrow wooden planks that just happen to lead from one building to another. With enough careful gameplay and patience, a player can get through, and there's a hooker ad on the roof of the last building. After this section, there's the section with the subways, and we just want to take a listen to the music in this place and its ambient noises. The Ripper has never appeared for us, but in terms of atmosphere, this section of the game is the most well executed. It absolutely nails how creepy environments should work in these kinds of video games, and it should absolutely be followed. Take a listen. After Rachel comes across another newspaper clipping detailing how the body of another hooker was discovered in a shipping container which bore signs of corpse diddling, the player then goes through a door and gets to the last and final section of the game, the slums. And if these are the slums, we're wondering what all that was before because there were so many barrels that were on fire. Anyway, after getting to a phone and realizing 911 is disconnected, the player needs to get 10 cents so they can make the phone call, but nickels are scattered throughout various abandoned buildings and sometimes just on the road. In addition to the worst circumstances that what seems like horror game Russian roulette could bring, the buzzer in her apartment is broken. Good job, society. Once Rachel gets 10 cents, she can call Rhonda and get let into the apartment. When Rachel is sitting down watching an old horror movie, she hears glass shatter and then a quack. The game then cuts to black. Again, for us, this is the best puppet combo game for a litany of reasons. Indulging in a setting in which you virtually know you'll be at the top spot on a series real killer's list of priority victims, i.e. early 80s New York, and on top of that really slummy parts of it, creates a mood in which the player feels the only route of escaping is weathering a storm involving getting stabbed by the most annoying disc jockey on the face of the planet, who also has the strangest fursona. While they're being directed to navigate through derelict subway tunnels, buildings filled with literal mounds of crack, side note, if Rachel wanted better employment than being a waitress, she could just pick up pounds of rocks here during the day and sell it to users. Anyway, building roofs with the shoddiest yet somehow legal scaffolding, among other things. If you want to realize how absurd New York laws are, just watch our old video on the Night Ripper. In addition to this, you also act as your own personal detective by finding newspaper clippings and piecing together who this guy is with things escalating so far to where he actually taunts you with a dead body. Coupled with the environment, the music is sure to put players in the most debilitating senses of unease they've felt in a while. If you have time, please listen to the Night Ripper's soundtrack, and if all the tracks aren't available, either buy the game or watch a full playthrough because Nick Bassett is extremely talented at what he does. Another reason we think this game is Puppet Combo's best is because of the antagonist. What an absolutely abominable creation of mankind. Who made him what he is? Why did he become like this? And in addition to being an extremely annoying DJ, being a very tall, menacing threat isn't what makes him so great in and of himself. But this old Donald persona just introduces enough comic mischief to leave us somewhat terrified and bewildered at the same time. Was the inspiration for him, the New York Ripper, that good of a movie? Not really. But if you want to laugh and want to see where we're coming from when we talk about the touch of subtle humor given to the Ripper, you'll understand after watching that movie. This is why we believe the Night Ripper to be Puppet Combo's best game.